Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. Today we're going to talk about unique monsters and standard ones. One thing we want to keep in mind with our unique monsters, and don't get me wrong, I love a good unique monster. One that the players just don't expect. It comes out of nowhere. They don't really know what to do. They've got to figure it out. It's a puzzle. But if you don't give them a baseline, they won't realize that, right? They're going to think that every monster is this puzzle that they have to solve. And it could just lead to them just attacking everything because they don't really know. For instance, can you imagine the first time that somebody used a rust monster? Think about it. The players, they've been going through the dungeon. They've got their fighters up front, plate mail armor, shields. They come into a room. They see creatures, giant lizards, giant spiders, goblins, orcs. The fighters move up every time they fight. Magic users in the back casting spells. Fantastic. They come into this room. They see this creature. It moves up on them. The fighters move up to do the thing they normally do. And now they're standing there in their underpants and no weapons because <laughs> the rust monster has destroyed their armor. But the important part here is that they had a standard practice. Having the armor, having the swords, doing this normally works. What makes the rust monster cool is that it came out of nowhere and defied what they normally believed. The normally believed is the part that I want to talk about today. I think that too many times we can get, we as game masters, myself, <laughs> can get wrapped up in these really cool monsters with super cool abilities and making everything very unique. But we have to remember that while you might think, oh, your standard goblin fight is boring, that's how we set a baseline for our world. We've got to have these kind of regular fights so that the player characters can realize when something different is going on. And also, they can establish a plan and get good at it. They can get better at combating those things. You go into the goblin's lair. They fight in kind of a chaotic way. They're all using short spears and they're throwing stones. They're running around wild. Players get used to that. They figure out a plan for it. Okay, they're not very organized. We can split them up. We can do this. Then you come back to that same goblin's lair and they're more organized. Some of them have bows. What's going on there? Perhaps a high-level fighter or maybe a hobgoblin has joined the tribe. They have taught them tactics. Now, of course, the goblins are new at it. They're not going to be perfect. Don't suddenly turn your goblins into this well-trained Roman elite force, right? Make roles to see if they can hold their ranks. Make roles to see if they don't just go by the way they've always been fighting because they get excited in combat. So that, again, it's something that's going on. It creates a little bit of chaos, a little bit of fun. Maybe the goblins always ride their wolves into combat and they're getting shot down by arrows and stuff. So this new leader says, no, 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 you're going to be behind the rocks, throwing stones, attract the player's attention. We're going to send the wolves around the back. Wolves are pack animals. They will flank them. They'll attack them from the rear. This gives, again, the goblins this advantage. And all of a sudden, you're thinking, why are the goblins doing this? They never did this before. That's when you realize something's up. That's what creates the emergent story. That's what keeps the players interested. One of the most common things, too, that I think we end up doing, which I'm not a huge fan of, is the change of a monster once the people figure it out. So we learn that, here's the classic one, we learn that trolls need to be burned or hit with acid, for instance, right, to make them not regenerate. So however you want to do that, maybe the players just know that, so you let them do it. Maybe the the players learn that, the player characters learn it in-game. And then all of a sudden, you reach the troll that when you hit it with fire, it regenerates twice as fast. Okay, I mean, maybe I get the idea of that as kind of a concept, but I kind of feel like now you're removing from the players the ability or the, the thing they learned, right? If I was going to do something like that, it would be with a group of trolls that are affected by fire so that it's a single troll that's standing out that's different, not just all of a sudden you get into a troll fight and it just doesn't operate the way that you'd normally think. I feel like once the players have established something, once they've learned something, you don't want to take that away from them, at least not willy-nilly. So what I would do here, my kind of balance is to have your kind of unique oddball monsters be something that generally, if it's something like a troll that can't be hurt by fire, generally you're telegraphing, right? Maybe when you normally go into a troll lair, right? 
they probably don't have fire, right? But the, in here, we've got these big, you know, pits with flames and they're, they're cooking their meat over it. You know, even if the trolls aren't in the room, the player characters can see all these fire pits and, you know, scraps of uh, burnt meat and this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, hold on, trolls, fire, that doesn't seem, you're telegraphing it, right? You're letting them know. Now, I know that I didn't, they didn't telegraph the rust monster, <laughs> but hey, you know what? Nothing's perfect. The idea here is that sometimes you want to do that because, again, I don't want to set up a situation where we are defying player expectation too much. We want things to be unique. We want them to be fantastic, but we and we want discovery, but we also don't want to be like, ha-ha, you knew that, and now you don't, so you're dead. You, you just don't want that. So you've got to really think out these unique monsters. The way I normally do changes to regular monsters, so we're going back to the troll thing, is I give it a reason. So what reason would a troll have to not be affected by fire? A ring of fire resistance, right? You have one troll in the group has become the leader troll because they're wearing this ring of fire resistance. And that's something the players can figure out. And if they figure it out and they get the ring off the troll, now they can use fire and it won't be able to regenerate. It's not just some troll that's different and now all of a sudden we can't kill it because it doesn't have to go by the standard rules. So same is true with what I mentioned before about the goblins, right? The goblins aren't just suddenly better at tactics because you want to make a challenge for your player. They're better because this fighter has been training them. Why has this fighter been training them? Who is this fighter? You can start to build up a bit of a background around that that can lead to a deeper story. Why is this fighter with these goblins who are way like the, the fighter clearly outclasses them? Let's say they're third, fourth level. Well, maybe they're recruiting an army because they want to do something else. They want to delve into the deeps. Maybe it's something they feel like only goblins can do. Maybe they found some treasure map, but for some reason, only goblins can go to this area. So they want to get the goblins on their side by kind of teaching them, right? I mean, there could be any number of reasons to create this. So this is the kind of thing I wouldn't normally just do on the fly. If you're changing a regular monster, do it with intent. Think about why you're doing it. Make a reason that it exists in such a way. Of course, truly unique monsters, so the Rust Monster, in the case, the first time they ever used it, right, is something different. That's the kind of thing you can just shake the game up with. I tend to not make these things to really, really super deadly, though. So again, a Rust Monster sucks because now suddenly you don't have armor, but they're probably not going to kill the party, right? Now they just put them in a bad place where they're going to have to retreat out of the dungeon, which stinks, right? It's not great, but it's no worse than a trap or something, right? If the sudden unique monster is so deadly that it just party wipes, that's not going to be fun, right? So we want to think about these unique monsters and think about unique things, unique qualities we can give them. This isn't just, I'm more powerful than you and I will kill you. Give them things that change the way the PCs have to do uh, normally operate. Make it so that they can't do the thing they normally do for that combat to spice things up, right? So that if they can't send now the next time, they get in the dungeon and they want to defeat this rust monster. They don't send the fighters forward with their uh, swords. Now they've got maybe a thief in the back that's in leather armor, or maybe some of the fighters wore leather, or maybe have a druid, depending on the system you're playing, and you use clubs or staves, something like that, or spears with a wooden point that maybe aren't as effective. This is basically how we defeat these kind of monsters. And by doing that, we can actually, again, now they've learned something. They now know how to defeat a rust monster because every now whenever they see a rust monster, you don't want it to be like, oh, next rust monster you run into, in fact, isn't a rust monster. It's a rot monster and any wood that it touches and leather falls apart. Again, that's not going to work. What you need to do is now you've established this new thing. So as the players are learning things, again, you use things again and again so that they see and understand it. Then you can start getting fun with it and be like, okay, well, now I'm going to take that troll <laughs> and I'm going to have them have rust monster pets right? Now you're facing a troll and you're facing rust monsters. So you don't want to just have that thief in leather run forward because the troll will wipe them out, but you don't want to have the fighters go forward because the rust monsters are there. How do we figure this out? And we're just creating a tactically interesting thing. So that's my advice there. With your unique monsters, make them unique in flavor, make them unique in theme, make them do something that makes the players have to rethink how they normally fight. So it's not just like, okay, tactic one, but Use them sparingly, and then once the players learn how they operate, you know, use them a few more times so they can feel like they are learning and growing. By the way, 
Once again, I'm sponsoring my own video with my t-shirts. If you're interested, I'll put a link. I did get some people that said that they were in Europe and wanted to get some, and they are on the European site, but I can't put a link to the group of them. So if you're in Europe and you want a t-shirt, uh, let me know in the comments and I will send you a direct link to your country's shirt. I guess that's the best way I can do it for now. It's very manual, but I'm not very high tech. What can I say? Anyways, one final thing. Make some monsters truly, truly unique. And those will become, and I hate this term, those are your boss, right? That's a major monster. And that's the kind of thing that you want to at least telegraph that it is incredibly dangerous. You don't need to telegraph all of its abilities, but give the players some options to figure it out. If you're going to a tomb and it's the first time that you've ever used a lich, put things, information out there. If the players make the right moves to do the right research, they can find out some things. This may be a spellcaster. This may be a level drainer. I mean, you might not say level drainer in world, but you know what I'm saying. This is the kind of thing you want to put into the lore and also into the lair if you can. You go into, like I mentioned before about the troll, trolls that are immune to fire, they're going to be using fire in their their lair, right? We'll see big bonfires and stuff, and that's going to be unusual. It should be. It should stand out to the player characters that why is the troll have a big bonfire if they fire is the one thing that can hurt them? Same thing with certain undead, right? Maybe they have, there's some stuff that's been destroyed in an old temple they took over because that stuff is dangerous to them. And when the players see these certain smashed holy symbols or whatever, they can start to figure out, okay, this creature doesn't like these things. And they can start to learn because again, since they are only going to fight this thing once because it is truly unique, they've got to do the learning process before they get to the monster. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear about your unique monsters, how you use kind of standard monsters in different ways. What do you think about this? Do you like to just use standard monsters? Do you like to use unique monsters? How do you telegraph stuff? You know, the normal stuff we talk about. Speaking of talking of those things, <laughs> go ahead in the show notes, you'll see a link to my Discord. Sign up over there, join the conversation. Also a link to the t-shirts, as I mentioned, a link to my Patreon if you want to support the channel, and I'll talk to you soon.